Hey, what's up everyone? Brad Chmielewski here with episode 132 of Shadow of the Main. So as you can see, or not see if you're listening to the audio, I'm here at home, did not go to Worlds. Worlds is wrapping up as I'm recording this episode, so there are no spoilers on who ended up being the world champions. Um, NA has a good chance there to make it happen, but I don't know, you probably already know, you're probably seen these games, you know what's happening. So we're not going to go into too much on Worlds. Uh, we're going to be talking about Update 2.0 a little bit, kind of some stuff that Captain Nito talked about, um, some stuff that hopefully might be coming, some changes like that. And I got Jeff from Halcyon Masters joining me, uh, kind of going over what he's doing, his YouTube channel with the Heroic Ties. It's pretty awesome what he's doing with uh, Sugar Venom's lore and just kind of making them almost a little more understandable. Uh, it's great to read the stories that Sugar Venom puts in, but there's something about like watching the video and seeing the artwork with the music and the sound effects kind of all coming together that gives it a whole new uh, life. Uh, so we go over that a bit, and we go over uh, these API that's going to be coming to Vanglory. So that's going to be really cool for VG Miner. I should really get them on here to talk about that. I know they were on a recent episode of Alternating Current with T Dog, so I should get them on to hear how they're going to be developing with this API and what their plans are moving forward uh, with Vanglory in 2017. Um, and sure, Fame, Fame Glory app is going to be doing some of the same stuff. You'll probably be able to get stats there. They have fantastic apps. Check that out. And then, got to mention the Patreon page before we jump in this episode. That's over at patreon.com slash shed of the vein. Thank you to all the people supporting you, me, you, you supporting me out there. Um, I should probably grab your names and start mentioning you on each episode of the podcast. I need to start doing that. I will start that next week, I promise. So anyone who is backing me there, you'll get name mentioned. So go over there, check it out. Got some fun rewards. I owe people stickers. I think I said that last time. They are here on my desk now. I just need to mail them out. <laughs> so hopefully we continue to grow with that in 2017 and 2017, 2017 and keep moving the podcast forward. All right, let's do it. Let's jump into episode 132. This is the 132nd episode of Shed of the Vein. My name is Brad Chmielewski, and this is a podcast all about fan glory. Every week, we try to break down the news, gameplay, game tips, and hopefully we can all become better players together. And every week, bringing on new people from the community, uh, people that love this game. I know a lot of people are at Vanglory Worlds right now. And I got Jeff from Halcyon Masters here. Both of us are in Chicago, not at Worlds. It it really is a shame. (laughs) Yeah, but welcome. Thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate the invite. Um, if people haven't seen you on Twitter, or we'll get into your YouTube series here in a minute, you wanted to give a little introduction of who you are? Certainly. Um, so as Brad said, I'm uh, Jeff from the Halcyon Masters. Um, been playing Vainglory pretty much since it came out in the United States, so a long-time player. Okay. And then um, out of a pet project, kind of where I wanted to learn how to use some uh, video editing software, we came out and we started to make uh, videos based on the Vainglory lore. And... Oh, cool. um, you know, to my surprise, it actually caught on. And, um, you know, we've been doing that for, you know, quite some time now. And it's been really just a passion project that I've had um, an extensive amount of fun with over the past, I think, six months. Cool. Yeah. Let's get into that. But how, so you got in when it started in A, was there just, did you see the keynote, the Apple keynote? Is that kind of what got into you or did someone else recommend it or yeah. check it out that way? So it was the Apple keynote. I remember downloading it for the first time and just getting absolutely wrecked. Uh, <laughs> there. I mean, it was... Uh, one of those where uh, it was almost an instant deinstall after my first time playing. <laughs> okay. Um, then after that, I think it came back around to me um, when the commercial came out with Jimmy Fallon and um, oh, yeah, Justin, Justin Timberlake. Timberlake. So I was like, all right, let's go ahead and give this another shot. Um, so I got on there, and of course, you know, I'd get the messages being like, why did you build Breaking Point on Celeste and everything else? <laughs> and um, 
you know, really my video game experience prior to that is pretty much zero. I mean, Mario Kart was about the extent of it, okay. which I mean, I'm an right. <laughs> absolute pro at Mario Kart, but, um, you know, no other MOBA, MOBAs before Vainglory. Um, and that's actually where I got my introduction to the likes of Twitch, uh, Mob, well, Mob Crush wasn't out at that time, but really Twitch and some of the other communities um, in kind of, okay, I actually want to see if I can get good at this game. So let's go ahead and see how the rest of the community is working on it. And, um, you know, I think since I started following select people on there, it escalated yeah. my game and then really just, you know, I fell in love with it. Yeah, because, yeah, you quickly just watch it and someone on Twitch for a day or even a week, you're like, oh, that really just helped me understand just the little bit when you first start. You're like, oh, OK, these are the things I need to build. I see them playing this. It, Let's do it this way. <laughs> exactly. Like, OK, that's what I'm actually supposed to do. Here's how we work as a team or, you know, the proper way of using pings, uh, you know, is another big one that I think is uh, the difference. And then from there, um, you know, I think the next step up from that point was uh, getting on to um, the team that I'm on today. And so it was just okay. through a couple of people that I had been queued up with on a regular basis. And uh, Rome is my main one. And they're like, hey, you know, you actually can keep us alive quite well. So <laughs> why don't you come play with us? And uh, we joined up on a team. And, uh, you know, I have to say out of those five guys, I've had the opportunity to meet one in real life. Um, you know, the other is, you know, a pretty good online friendship from that point. And really, it makes the cool. game even more fun. So. Nice. So who do you end up playing when you're Rome? Do you have a favorite? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Lyra right now is probably where um, I'm the best at. Um, I do love a good game with Finn. Arden is always a good comfort pick. Um, yeah. You know, Catherine from way back in the days. Uh, I love a cool down Cath where you just stack yeah, up your perks. Yeah, good. Yep. <laughs> For sure. And then, uh, you know, Celeste is actually my go-to hero if I'm ever not in the Rome position. So. Oh, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then from, from playing, then you kind of like, did you get like engrossed in the lore to start this, uh, YouTube series, this heroic ties? Like, is that, or did you said you were kind of just wanting to edit and kind of get into that, but were you already reading the lore and kind of loving what sugar, Ren sugar venom was putting together? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's give credit where credit is due and really, you know, any success that is in the Halcyon Ties is due to Sugar Venom and the rest of the SEMT, <laughs> SEMC team for just putting together such an amazing, like, universe on the side. And yeah. um, I wouldn't say I was engrossed with it prior to making the series, but then once I made that first video, which kind of goes from, you know, start to finish all the heroes as of update, I think, 1.20, that's right. when I really got into the research of it and, you know, saw how well connected each story actually is. And then from there, I think it, it picked up in terms of, you know, really assessing the nuances that are in there and falling in love with the story that is Vainglory. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, like, yeah, now going deeper, there's, there's three or is there four videos up? Oh, uh, Halcyon Ties? Yeah. Seventeen. Oh, 17. Oh, man. Then I, what was I? <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe I looked at the YouTube page that I linked here and I saw the like four recent ones. Yeah. <laughs> no. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> so, I mean, I think really we have like four main stories. So we've done yeah. um, the overview, which um, I think came out right after Sky, or not Sky. Um, yeah, it was update 1.20. And okay. then the channel really picked up when they did the summer skins. And so that was one of the biggest videos to date that I had had, which was uh, Kestrel, um, Kestrel Saw and um, Thin. And Accrual, yeah. And Accrual, okay. yep, thank you for that one. And okay. then we've been going back and doing um, different series. So we've gone through and done, um, I'm just finishing up Rise of the Star Queen. Actually, I just need to put like one or two more songs on that one. It'll be out today hopefully awesome okay. so we've got two parts before that one uh we've done um i'm blanking on the actual name of it which i, you know, I feel like i'm should know this um <laughs> but yeah we've done all of arden's lore oh it was uh stormguard saga and yeah. that one was a lot of fun to put together uh but it was a quite a large one in itself and then so um, yeah so then yeah a couple of putting them putting them together you said so you did the skin lore one how tricky does it get keeping track of 
I guess, canon lore and uncanon lore. Because a couple of the skins mm-hmm. are canon. Couple, and yeah. Some, most, most of them are not. So um, the skin lore, I think, is where it gets very confusing. And you're like, well, that's a cool story, but doesn't really mean anything, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, my priority at the moment is to go through and do all the canon lore first. Uh, the reason okay. that I'm doing Star Queen is actually... Um, Sugar Venom sent out a tweet, and I was like, or I sent her one. I'm like, if there was a story that you could hear, what would it be? And she goes, I would like to see Rise of the Star Queen. So okay. I go in there, and I'm like, oh, well, the second largest uh, series in your portfolio. But yeah, let's do it. So that's where we are today. <laughs> but the goal for the, the Halcyon Masters is to first go through all the canon lore. Then we'll revisit, and we'll go back through and do all the skin lore after that point in time. Or if okay. one that comes out that's just way too cool to pass up yeah we'll skip right to it and have some fun with it but so yeah the plan is to do the canon first skin after that so we can tell the story the best that we can we think that's the best way to bring it to everyone okay how do you feel about there being i guess two different stories do you feel like i almost wish the canon or the skin lore worked into the whole thing on a on a bigger idea because you have stuff like fury rona and Mm -hmm. that kind of works into this other world that um i'm blanking on the name of it right now where uh (laughs) the churn yeah the churn the churn is real but there's also skin based off the churn right (laughs) exactly it i think the churn is like well what if we take a, a character that is more on the spectrum of being on the good side versus well First of all, there's no good and evil, which is one of the nice things about this. I mean, you can argue it one of two ways. We can talk about that later. But I think the <laughs> churn just allows them to shift the spectrum one way or the other Okay. as they go through. And, But we know in the canon lore that the churn is there because that's really what brings Saw into the fold for the first time because that's what creates the Leviathan that he fights. Right. Um, you know, that's one that comes off the top of my head. Um you know, Boiling Bay, which is um, in the Stormguard saga, is where Celeste and her family are hiding out. And that is, um, you know, pretty toxic due to the churn that's coming out of this area. So it's an it's an ever present item that's in there. And we actually find out that it's due to um, the Halcyon energy coming out of these wells. Okay. So, um, you know, I think that the the skin lore then just says, okay, well, if we tweak this one little thing, where does it go? But I still like how they tie it in, so it kind of loops back in. in right. Way. Yeah. <laughs> it does get really yeah. confusing. <laughs> uh-huh, because, yeah, if you, were to, if you were to dive in, you like, coming to the game now, it's kind of tough to, like, all right, well, how does everyone work? Like, I've seen the stories evolve since the beginning basically so i kind of i have a good sense of where things are but i cannot imagine coming in now and being like wait how does uh finn fit into this why is there a why is there a baby dragon (laughs) and scar's the most mysterious of them all maybe you know second to adagio but yeah like where does this baby dragon come from (laughs) and you know the question then becomes what if he grows up you know (laughs) right yeah (laughs) then he's way too op so Cool. So, uh, what's uh, what's after the Star Queen? Have you ever started planning that? Like, what can people expect, or I, are I, you taking requests? <laughs> you know, I read every comment that comes through the YouTube channel, and um, by far the most requested character right now is surprisingly Petal. So, oh really? Okay. Um, I can't promise that I'm doing it, but that you know, pretty good hint that Petal may be coming up soon, and okay. Flicker. Nice, yeah, because they kind of they go together a bit. They do, mm-hmm. yeah. So. so they're mortal enemies between the oh, two of them. Man. Yeah. All right, that one that one should be pretty fun, and maybe maybe at that point we'll get the tier three petal skin by the time you're done with that. <laughs> maybe you know, like hopefully if I bring it, it maybe like brings petal back to the forefront a little bit, so people are like, hey, yeah, let's see what happens later. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't Very do the cool. skin lore on petal until I get that tier three. So. Right. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, very cool. So Halcyon Masters is also your team. It's kind of the people you play with, right? Yeah. So the team name is actually the Grondins. Um, okay. And it's uh, our team captain, Juggernaut, is um, a big history buff. So these are fighting lawyers, essentially, is what the team is named <laughs> after. <laughs> okay. And then uh, the guild is uh, Unknown Cypher uh, that we have. And 
it's uh, affiliated with Impact Gaming as well. So Impact okay. is more of the competitive uh, version of it. And then we want to be able to have a... Um, a casual... I, yeah, more casual, more like still active but more casual we're not you know ranking every second of every day trying you know to see how do we get into uh the various events that we have like you know worlds vipl etc and so right. okay very cool yeah uh well yeah i'll include a link to the youtube channel like everyone should check these out it's 17 videos up that's a, a lot to go through should fill a good Look, work day if you need to listen to them. <laughs> yeah. They're relatively short, so it's yeah. uh, it's pretty easy to digest. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, cool. Should we jump into the news? There's a there's a bunch of stuff to talk about and some stuff we won't talk about, I think. Let's do <laughs> it. Yeah, there's a lot happening right now. That. All right. So first off in the news is probably Worlds. It's happening right now. Uh, as we're recording this, Phoenix, Armada, vs. Gangstars are on their fourth game. <laughs> that <So>. third <laughs> game was unbelievable. We can't say anything about it, but... <laughs> right, yeah. So uh, definitely go back and watch that one. That was probably the best one I've seen of the weekend so far. Uh, but so we won't, we won't spoil anything i guess the win we can't spoil the winner because we don't know who wins this whole <laughs> tournament yet so um i think it's hard to get away from though if you open up the game there'll be like probably a big announcement in there that whoever won congratulations so uh but how's uh have you been watching these how what do you think of the games this weekend i have uh so i watched all through vipl and then when you watch worlds I think the level of gameplay has risen even that much more. I think there's some ways that these teams are playing with each other that, you know, maybe were held back a little bit during VIPL, knowing that they were going to Worlds, et cetera. And yeah. um, <laughs> these plays are just unbelievable. There's a flicker play out there that was just so much fun to watch in, what was it, day two? Where, you know, I think the shifting meta, how the new heroes are coming out and interacting you know, these pro teams really are some of the first that come out with like, okay, here's how we use them the best. And, right. you know, Flickr has been one of those characters that's been fun to watch. Um, you know, Kestrel in the position that she's in, you know, either ban or if she does come through, it's always a playmaker. And then <laughs> just the pure mechanics are, you know, you know, I like to say I take a lot of what I see there and try to incorporate it into how we play, you know, even if it's, you know, one tenth of what they can do. Right, yeah. Well, you see builds and things like that, like, trickle down. Like, I already know, like, was it yesterday or the first day we saw the Tension Bow Aftershock Glaive, kind of, and that has hit the fold pretty hard already. Like, I've seen that in multiple games. Yep. Or, <laughs> you know, the Glass Cannon build, too, which is an interesting one. Now, <laughs> I still hope people build defense, <laughs> especially as a Rome main, but... Right, because it was uh, Phoenix Armada and... Uh, um, infamous was right where they they were kind of talking about this uh, glass cannon they don't build defense they maybe get one reflex block and that is it That's besides it. the carries get that and then the roamer gets their like normal stuff but their whole strategy is uh we just position better like we don't need defense because positioning is our defense and now this glass cannon thing i think it's uh it's gonna hurt a lot of people <laughs> I'd, I'd have to agree with you you know Phoenix Armada can do it because when they say positioning, their positioning is perfect. You know, their okay. roam is always absorbing all the damage. They know exactly where the ultimates are coming from. And um, the roam's reflexes are spot on where they can, you know, knock out that massive ultimate. Or, you know, each player, I think what they're saying, too, is the carries are responsible for reflex blocking themselves. And the roam is there for later on in the fight. And you can yeah. see that strategy, too. <laughs> and then let's just put out as much damage as possible. So, yeah, there's a there's a form or yeah on the Vanguard forms a post about this glass cannon thing that was started I think even before the the world stuff happened, and people were already starting to see this glass cannon. I think uh, it's kind of been just happening slowly as people feel like well I can just burst people down because we're seeing more Gwens and Celeste like just going glass cannon because you can poke from so far away. Yeah. 
Well, how have you seen that in your play? Um, you know, when I come into mine, I'm still seeing pretty standard builds where defense is a priority. Um, and I'm in that essay level gameplay. Are you seeing um, more of the ga- are more of the glass cannon kind of creep into where you're playing? I think uh, sometimes like I'm at PLA bronze and kind of fluctuate around there. But uh, sometimes I think it depends on the hero. I think... Uh, man it's kind of it's kind of all over the place mm-hmm. like i often just solo queue too so sometimes those games are like man this guy he didn't build any defense what's he doing but then they destroy us like earlier today i was playing and glass cannon jewel you know crystal jewel just blows everyone up and that doesn't matter because one ultimate it's up again and 30 40 seconds yeah and, and as long over. as Jewel's <laughs> facing you you know she does have that natural def- her defense in her but as soon as yeah. he turns, then she's done for. So Right, exactly. I also see uh, a lot of glass cannon in Gwen uh, when I'm playing. If there's a hero that I see it, it's Gwen. Just yeah. Because her B allows her to get out, and she can do so much damage so quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think it's been some pretty fun games to watch. It was kind of sad to see Team Secret get knocked out on the first day. I don't, I don't think people saw that happening or potentially happening but yeah they just were out of it <laughs> it's rough well it just shows how good the rest of the competition is because i mean those guys are still solid <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and I've... it's worlds i mean who knows the dynamics when you're sitting on a stage in front of uh i have a teammate that's actually there right now and he says the oh, place cool. is packed so. nice that's good that's, that's a good sign yeah and even twitch has over ten thousand people been watching pretty s- steadily all weekend so that shows the game is you know uh, being well received. Yeah, and that's ten thousand just on NA for the English speaking stream. So oh, that's I've, true. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't even taken a look at. I think they have six other languages that they're simultaneously broadcasting, and you know we know other areas are you know if not as popular or more popular than they are in NA. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, well, cool. We'll, we'll be probably be watching the rest of the games here, and as we uh, <laughs> see who the world championship winner is so yeah. be exciting <laughs> and without any more spoilers i just saw an ace come through so it's kind of fun to watch yeah hopefully uh so then uh, leading up to worlds there was an announcement from uh super evil about like a few things that were coming that we could see and i think one of the big ones is this esports franchise program that's going to happen in 2017 uh so this just kind of shows that Super Evil kind of wants to support the esports teams. They realize how important it is for the growth of the game to make sure players can afford to play the game. Because mm-hmm. that's that's the biggest thing about any esports stuff. It's like, if you're not making enough money doing this, why are you doing it, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, you can only go so far on a passion project. And- right. And stream tips and some money from mob crush or subs on twitch that's not very much <laughs> <laughs> no or youtube revenues let me tell you i can tell you that one personally but you know um the fact that vainglory said we are going to share in our revenues is the single biggest thing to come out of that um announcement right there and i think it's a promise from semc to any team of people that said hey we want to dedicate our time to your game and they're saying we're going to dedicate our resources to you as well and, you know, that's going to lead to some good growth, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, hopefully. And hopefully they continue to support, I think, not just the esports side, but the other people making YouTube content or podcasts or streams and kind of continue down that path, too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I like actually that topic, too, since we're talking about the esports part and we see that's a big investment in a big area where they're focusing. Um, and myself as a YouTuber, um, you know, I had my expectations set when I came in. So, you know, for me, this was a, this was a, a passion project. I wanted to learn right. a certain skill. You know, my, my ambition was not for monetary gain on this. But what I've been really delight, delighted about was the fact of how easy it is for me to communicate with SEMC. If there's a question or a comment or a concern that I have, you know, I can easily reach out to a community manager. And, you know, that right there, just to have that, in you know shows me that there is an investment on that side it's not an email it's an actual direct communication right yeah because there's you know there's twitter there's slack channels there's they're also hanging out in discord channels very often so you can get a hold of someone if you're 
if you're interested in making content or doing something within the game by i guess spectrum like they'll they'll talk to you they'll talk to you <laughs> And we're also seeing the announcement of um, the new um, the new program in which it is for rewards for content creators. So I think they've right. announced what it is for Twitch and Mob Crush, and then I think we'll see YouTube and other content creation channels come out after that, which you know really helps with a lot of the um, in-game monetary aspects, which is like how do we actually get skins? How do we you know build up content, etc. You know based on yeah. the size of your channel. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's exciting. Um, did you watch Christian's Christian talked on stage at the shred briefly on day two? Did you see him? Did he talk anything beyond what was in this blog post? Like I didn't, I didn't, I missed him. I was out riding go-karts at the time. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty fun. Um, yeah. no, he, um, no, he stuck pretty close to the script. Um, so they talked about their, uh, you know, significant rise in playership on the Android platform. You know, that kind of leads me to question what's going on with iOS. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> but we also know that there's a lot more Android phones out there than um, iOS phones. So, you know. Especially in Korea and China. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's a very good metric for them um, if we boil it down that way. So, um, and then I think he took over as the announcement was he's now taking over as CEO. Am I correct on right. that? Yes. And so I think he's just, you know, saying, hi, I'm the head of this company, you know, we're excited what's coming out for 2017. And really the one that you're going to be interested in is hearing Captain Nito's speech today, which is going to be in between the, um, the two prelims. Right. So yeah, I will, yeah, I will probably cut in on that mm -hmm. in this episode because we won't know about it yet. We won't. <laughs> but that one, I, I suspect that we're going to see a lot of stuff because when they say it's a 2.0 update, I mean, my imagination just goes wild on what they could actually include. Yeah, but yeah. Before we jump into that, but uh, there was also the announcement of the the, the API coming, which is kind of cool for someone like VG Miner and Fame Glory and kind of some of those people that are making stats and providing information about mm -hmm. the game. That's kind of a huge announcement that I think everyone would love to see. I'd love to have some easy stats to look at because VG Miner and these other ones that are they're neat. Like if you upload them and take the time, but I forget. I'm like, oh, sh crap, I should have took a screenshot so I could add my data to it. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I forget, and I'm also a little biased towards when, you know adding my wins and not my losses on there. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> it's one of those where it's just like after the loss, you're like, all right, let's just get to the next one. And then the win, you're like, oh, let me screenshot this. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, but no, this API is, I mean, that's really cool. It's something that I've seen in the forums for, you know, a year at least or more and yeah. what we're gonna i mean there's some smart guys out there they're gonna be really pulling out some really cool information and i'm curious to see what it's going to do to the meta eventually you know are we going to see it you know potentially change the way we look at different heroes or item builds or that's true because if, if we know win rate on pedal is 68 percent we may see this happens in league if you watch any streamers over there in league of legends they'll be like oh the win rate on this person is 48 don't pick them yeah <laughs> <laughs> well and then we kind of come into the fact is if we're really early in a new patch and we see a win rate on a hero drop because maybe the play style has changed you know does that impact you know the way that it is or you know how long until we actually see where the, they truly fall Right. So I think a good example is Kestrel when they made the slight change uh, where people shifted from focusing on auto attacks to her glimmer shots. And we saw like, wow, her glimmer shots actually are, you know, significantly stronger, but no one played her that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think VG Miner and, uh, you know, the rest of these groups are really going to shed some light on, you know, on these new hero on just different ways of playing the heroes and builds. Mm, definitely. So I can't wait to see how quickly someone adapts and rolls that out here. Oh, so it's going to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then uh, 2.0, like I said, we're since we're recording before the announcement, I'm going to edit in a 2.0 thing, probably about here or right after this. But we do know it's coming December 14th. Uh, we know a little bit about this chess system redesign and some new UI stuff. Um, anything you're like hoping to see or like uh 
potentially have heard thoughts of? We know um, new new hero, of we, course, will be coming. <laughs> we know new hero. Um, what have the uh, the guilds the, the guild um, admin add-ons? I think is going to be big too. Um, right. Yeah. So at the beginning, we talked about you know teams and guilds, and I know that's been one of the things is how do we actually build up a a healthy guild? And this um, you know I hope they find some you know interesting ways of recruiting, finding guilds, finding people that are going to be active around the same time that you are. And I think the other thing they said is now that guild progress rewards are based on milestones and not based on end of season payout. So therefore, like my timing in the guild is not tied to just being there for the end of the season. It's right. tied on my contribution. Uh -huh. I did see one person uh, mention this in one of the chats I was in. He said, well, what happens if a guild gets to 99 early on and then everyone's like, later, we're out. We're going to join another guild to get those rewards. Oh, interesting. That is a little bit of a... Uh... Never thought about that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds good going up, but then you're like, everyone left me. Or does that same group just be like, all right, well, we started another guild, you know, under the same name. Everyone move over mm -hmm. here. We'll level that up and we'll just bounce back and forth. It seems like there could be an easy fix on that, which would be do it like the sunlight. So as soon as you reach level 50, you know that your daily reward is always going to be significant. So maybe it's once yeah. you reach a certain amount of guild fame, um, you know, the equivalent of another five levels, let's say, then gives you another reward that's, you know, that's substantial enough to make it worth your while not to have to grind to 99 again. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the biggest weird one in the guild fame thing is like playing solo queue will now get you guild fame, which kind of just goes against everything this game they've been shoving down us since day one. Like, play with your friends, go out, and like, it's on a mobile so you can meet up. And, you know, play with your friends, do this. The game is more fun together. Now you can play by yourself and get just as much out of it. <laughs> well, let me play devil's advocate on that one. Okay. Um, I find some benefit from playing solo queue every once in a while. Um, so, you know, by me playing as a pre-made team or a duo queue every time, I know my teammates. But there are times when I can go out and I can play solo queue and I'm either in a um, you know, in a roam position or a different one where I can actually learn a different tactic or two based on what my teammates are doing in, in that case. Sure. So yeah. I think the way they're doing it, which is I think a third of the fame that right. you get for guild, it's pretty low. It's kind of like if you want to, it's like mining for glory playing battle royales. You know, <laughs> you're not going to get there very fast. But, you know, the incentive really is to pair up with someone else. So 100% with a duo queue and I think a 100 plus percent uh, with a pre-made three-person team. Mm -hmm. So I think it just says, you know, if you choose to solo queue, you know, you're okay, but, you know, really it's not going anywhere for you. Right, but so. it keeps your activity alive for some of these guilds that may have rules. Like, if you're inactive for five days, you're kicked. Oh, do we know if that actually counts towards, like, um, the fame boost? Oh, that I don't know. I, that's another way that they could address it right there, which is your know, fame boost is only when you do duo or uh, mm. three person queue. Yeah. Interesting. And tricky yeah. stuff when you start changing it and then someone's like, well, I can just game the system. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love finding those little things where you can yeah. exploit, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yep. we, we did get some news on the, the mystery chess too. Like there's going to be new chess system coming mm -hmm. this update uh, or these, this new version, I want to say, really say, and they're kind of making it so there's going to be these mystery chests where you can get a hero and and skin in it. Any hero, any skin will be in these mystery chests. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, just you have a one in three chance of winning in that, and you could also win one million opals, which is kind of cool. I wonder. It says extremely rare, but we'll probably see a few of those in the first day. Yeah, I can't wait to see the first like Twitter post being like the you know card that's right there, <laughs> <laughs> you know a platinum card drop or something like that. Sure. But yeah, a million opals. I mean, you're set in vainglory for you know a good long time in that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's interesting. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sold on the key system when it came to yeah. you know the current chess, and you know partly is it's just that. 
portion of chance where I like, uh, you know, rewards to be tied to achievement versus just the push of a button. And, you know, I, I'll be interested to see how it, I guess I'll reserve my, um, my opinion for it until I see when it comes out. So, right. Yeah. But I do think that moving in the right direction, it is increasing the level of reward per chest is definitely a, a shift in the right direction and something I think is going to, you know, people are going to like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, lots of, lots of cool stuff coming with 2.0. I think the, the gameplay changing and the, the different strats that are going to come out is going to make it more fun. I know someone who I put out a video like every day playing the game and it's like, <laughs> all right, we take the backs, we do this, let's rotate up and fight. There's, <laughs> it's kind of a year and a half. It's like, all right, yeah. That was a good mm-hmm. time. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You know, we actually got started doing gameplay videos, and I'm like, how do I actually change this up a little bit so it actually makes it worthwhile? And, you know, our initial part of it was, it was like, let's not just have our chat while we're doing it, because it is that same thing you said. It's, all right, let's go down and get the backs. Let's go down this one. You know, and then it becomes, let's fast forward during all the, um, during all the farming and then get to why we do what we do. Okay, yeah. And so... Um, yeah, I think they're, you know, I think 2.0, I'm optimistic for what's going to come out of it. And hopefully we see some new items that, you know, maybe change up the way we look at the game. So, and I think it's a great time for anyone who's thinking about starting to make content to jump in that version too, because all the old videos that like Rumbly or Ben Tim or Commander Al, anyone has on their YouTube channel, most of them are probably not worth watching now because they have different builds, different play styles, everything's out the window. <laughs> it is. It's always changing. And you know, I think that also helps out if you're a content creator, put which build or put what patch it is in your description. Now, it right. may limit the number of like reviews that you get later on in the day, but you know, it's the best thing for the people viewing your videos saying, "Okay, here's the most relevant for me today." Yeah, and exactly. You know, especially when 2.0 comes out, that's going to, you know, it's going to be a race to see who can create some really good content. Mm-hmm. But speaking of creating content, what do you think of Replay System? Uh, the Replay System has been pretty neat. I have a couple issues with it. I still have a problem saving games because you have to record the whole game. Or if yeah. you want to save your entire game, you have to record the whole game. And then you can't walk away. You have to stay there and like move stuff around because your iPad will go to sleep. So <laughs> I, I have not tried to record a whole game off it. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not sitting around here for 22 minutes. Right, because I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I'll do a... I liked how that game went. I didn't record it anywhere else. So let's record it now and then I'll like talk back through it. But I did not have a good way. And then I walked away to make some food and I came back and it stopped and I couldn't go back to the replay. <laughs> so that was yeah. kind of a bummer. Mm-hmm. Well, for version one, I'm, I've been happy with it, especially, um, you know, I really like the ability to like clear out the titles and the names and the health bar and like really zoom in on the heroes. And yeah, I'm, you know, if and when uh, a viewer of this watches any of the Heroic Ties ones, you'll see we've actually started incorporating a lot of that into our videos to try to you know, add some cinematics to it. And so, you know, just the way that content creators are going to be able to use replay system, you know, is going to get better and better as people find different ways of tweaking it, playing with it, and then distributing content, you know, from their games and where it's coming from. So Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, can't wait to see it get better. And just, I think when you have to rewind, though, they need to, like, the load time on that needs to be a little faster because that's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> It is, especially when you're like going back and looking at the clip. You're like, all right, there's a huge black bar right there, black bar right there. Yep, all those different ones. Or when you miss the shot up, it's not yeah. good. Uh, but <laughs> it's it's cool. So I can't wait to see that evolve over here in the next uh, in 2017. Be cool. Yep. Uh, so yeah, probably right here. I'll cut in and we'll go over kind of some of the updates that uh, we talked about at Worlds. All right. So I said I was gonna cut in here once we had the announcement, Captain Edo came on stage and kind of gave a little bit of a rundown of what's going to come in 2.0. We got a, a video that probably 
on the Vanglory website and will be shared with the update 2.0 patch note. So keep an eye out for that. Go look at that. It's pretty good. Voiced by Playoff Beard. But really, to sum up what Captain Ito said for 2017, basically, Vanglory is going to be bananas. Uh, in 2.0, we got a new hero coming. He's an assassin. Uh, some really cool items. It looked like uh, three or four new items will be introduced uh, in 2.0. Um, one of those being Echo. Echo looks kind of nuts. You can use any ability again. So that means you could use uh, Cruel's ultimate. Uh, anybody's ultimate, you know, two gauntlets down. No one's getting out of that. Like double them up. They can't get out. Um, so it looks like a fun support item that can like nullify anything. So yeah, can't wait to see that. Can't wait to play with that. Um, no other like previews. They kind of teased it as a what's going to be coming in 2017 but uh there wasn't there wasn't too much of that it was really just like here's 2.0 2.1 2.2 2.2 is going to be really interesting they said uh both of those have some fun stuff coming i think we're just going to see a lot of changes and then one of the big changes is the minion miner he now spawns with your team and walks out and kind of roams around the jungle a little bit and this was an idea i suggested a long time ago and have said probably here on the podcast a couple times that the minion miner should do more work at helping protect your jungle and we're going to see that here in update 2.0 so can't wait to get my hands on it probably i think the pbe people will get to share updates and everything here very soon um probably greenlit uh probably this coming week so get ready for a lot of content coming out from people with the items and the new hero and everything like that i can't wait to go over his uh his abilities they did not go over the new hero abilities or anything like that so keep a lookout for that all right back into the episode and then moving on in the news, I think this was a great uh, thing Super Evo started doing. I think it was Brian Glory who suggested this, was doing interviews of players, content creators, just anyone making stuff for the game. And they finally did their first one this past week with Lady Wabish. Um, it's a snapshot interview. It's so short. It probably took them like five 10 minutes to put together but it's really nice to see yeah i i read through that one and i'm like you know it's it's really a nice feature and you know for those that are in the community that may not know who she is it kind of gives a backstory on you know what she's done for you know vainglory from the very beginning like i remember her being you know one of the people interviewing you know some of the first people on the competitive scene you know that's right yeah and um not along with all the streaming and everything else that she does so yeah i think it's a great move so mm -hmm. Um, so I think they said they're going to do these was it once a month. So there's, what, there's only 12 a year. So that's not that many. <laughs> I think it was once a month. I don't think it was every week. Every week may get just too time consuming for them. But I think it was mm -hmm. once a month coming. Uh, but yeah, check that out. They did it on Reddit. And I think they put it up on the forums. So not sure. Not sure who's next. But it'll probably be someone not streamer. I'm sure they'll try to bounce around and try to cover everyone artists anyone doing stuff yeah well that does it for the news i had the suggestion to remove the free hero rotation because i end up putting these out mondays and by that time tuesday it changes so it's tough to really work into the podcast so we're going to cut those from this from now on we're going to end the news segment and jump into some form static So on the forums, and I don't know if you saw this on Twitch lately, is we've been seeing some sponsored streamers, more sponsored streamers coming up. And I think the latest ones were sponsored by Amazon and not by Super Evil Megacorp. Because uh, Amazon, you know, they had those coins that they were doing, what, split one of Evil 8 this year and so now they're like kind of trying to get some other people to play the game but have you seen this and is this a good way to promote the game because these people know nothing about the game <laughs> you know i have i actually jumped on or i went back and reviewed one or two of the streams and from an outreach perspective 
you know, it's an interesting approach. Um, it definitely gets the game out to a, another group of people that may not seek out Vainglory themselves and they follow a streamer that they trust. The other thing that I saw on it was, you know, and then take this with a grain of salt piece, these are sponsored streamers, but the reviews have actually been relatively good from these guys saying, you know, okay, once I figured out how to play this, it's actually been a lot of fun. Okay. Um, I forget who the one guy was. I know he played, he's a League of Legends player. He got on there, um, you know, at during the load screen, he was playing Kashka. He looked through the builds really quick and he goes, oh, okay, assassin, jump in, jump out, got it. He went in there and just dominated on, <laughs> yeah, on Kashka. <laughs> sure, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, you can see how the parallel, and I think for a League player that's like, all right, well, maybe I could pick this up as, a, you know, a second game or, ex you know, experience Vainglory. To watch how that one carried over and watch how he did it, it kind of took that learning curve fear out of it a little bit okay. so that they could come in and take a look at it. So, you know, it's an interesting approach. Um, you know, the proof's in the pudding. So, you know, who knows how many people actually transition over. But I think any content for or any promotion for Vainglory is, you know, good promotion. So. Sure, yeah, but I th yeah, I think you're probably only going to see, like, from a streamer that has, you know, a couple thousand people, you might get one or two to come over and download it and stay even because mm -hmm. most of those people in those chats, like, I think this forum post, like, was like, their chat is just all spam. It's people just saying random stuff, as Twitch chat usually is, and there's usually lots of, like, toxic stuff, like, what's this League of Legends clone, this is <laughs> MOBA for babies, stuff like that comes up, so you're already, yeah. your, your chat is hating on it, so if I was a, someone watching this or in chat, I'd be like, oh, well, my peers in chat don't like this, so that means this guy is just getting paid to do it, so whatever, we can just make fun of it. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. You know, maybe a different way of approaching it would be, um, you know, if they're a competitive player, if they're an established person on that side, pair them up with the uh, other, like with their Vainglory counterpart that's in their gaming organization. So they That'd actually cool, like yeah. see how it works, how it does. Then people can kind of experience and get to know, you know, uh, the TSM team or the Cloud9 team, et cetera. And so that way it kind of crosses over and it uses that brand loyalty from the gaming perspective to just say this is another one that our organization sponsors as well it goes from there so then you leverage not the streamer but the organization as well yeah i think that would be that'd be really fun if we saw like von c come and teach bjergsen how to play vanglory and that was a video that maybe super evil helped put together but then tsm released because tsm they do a good job talking about uh vanglory on their twitter and on their reddit so they try to promote it because mm -hmm. they're behind it. It's their it's their team. They want to see them do well. <laughs> uh, of course. And, you know, it can only help them out in the long run, too, with the success. So, mm -hmm. Do you yeah. think, uh, like, maybe YouTube ads or ads like that would be better for Vanglory? We see a lot of, like, mobile legends and mobile legends ads on uh, on YouTube videos. And that seems like a, maybe a better route than here's the game unlock and some money for a streamer. Go for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I come from this background, so it's like, where do you put, you know, your marketing dollars and everything else? And you know, it's one of those where I, I trust in the fact that there's some very smart people running the numbers and kind of where they're putting their investment dollars in on it. Probably, uh, yeah. probably <laughs> yes. Um, and so, you know, how I think of myself and like, how many games have I actually downloaded and played because I've seen an advertisement on it? You know, it's like I see Mobile Strike every single day and I hate that game with a passion, <laughs> even though I have never downloaded it. It's just okay. because it's everywhere I turn. You know, Boom Beach as well. You know, I actually did download that one. And then I go, oh, this is the, you know, worst pay to win game that I've, you know, <laughs> seen. And it's, you know, we're lucky that we're in a in Vainglory where it is not pay to win. You know, the only time that you actually need to pay to win would be to get to eight heroes to get into draft if you really want to accelerate yourself. But that's the one and only time in the game where, you know, you could accelerate yourself using real dollars. Yeah. Okay. But, um, you know, it's, um, it's one of those cases where do they want to grow organically first 
or you know the other side of it too is let's look at Southeast Asia. We know that there's some server issues that are over there, and that's because the game is exploding. You know they've well, come out and said it's been there for two, three years there. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. And you know they, you know um, I forget what the guy's name is. He goes, you know, my favorite problem is when you the player base breaks my servers. And so you know maybe it's one of those where you know they're they're controlling the ramp up to some extent. Um, okay. So they can actually control that part. So, so they can't handle it. Okay. <laughs> they can't handle it. I mean, there's, I mean, the scale issue, I mean, it's just the number of variables that are on that part is something that is unknown to me. So to say, yeah, you should put your marketing dollars into YouTube ads, you know, it's premature for me to say yes or no. But, you know, do I want to see the game get bigger? You betcha. Mm -hmm. So um, and I think, yeah. Yeah. With these sponsored streamers, if they're going to keep doing them, which it seems like they are, they need to have people there making sure they're in the chat, either someone from Vanglory or you know people from the community need to go in there. Hey, let me let me give you some tips about the game. This is what here's how you download or here's where you downloaded. You know you're mm -hmm. playing Kashka. Build these items. Like so maybe maybe that needs to happen more or just some like. Completely agree with you on that point. Like, if you're seeing the streamer, you know, have an SCMC rep with them that is playing the game with them. So it's a pre-made party. You can hear the like, you can hear the communication, how to play with friends. Yeah. You know, hey, go here, come with me on this one. I'm <laughs> gonna protect you here. Like, you know, that's really the fun part of the game when you get into it. Um, and so that I think would be a good help on that part. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, mm -hmm. I think that's gonna do it for episode one thirty-two. Jeff, thanks for joining me. This was awesome. Of course. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, where can people find you, get in touch with Twitter, YouTube, and where yep. are all the good places? Do you got band? <laughs> no band, uh, okay. although Impact Gaming does have a band, so you can search them, and I'm uh, part of that group. Um, on YouTube, uh, search the Halcyon Masters. The series is called Heroic Ties. Uh, we also have a Twitter, which is um, Halcyon Masters, with an S on the end. Cool. And... Uh, yeah, love to have you come out, check out our content. Um, and two, I was telling Brad or, you this earlier, I read every comment that's on there. So stop nice. by, let me know what you think. And you know, that's really where I get the most pleasure out of this, is just engaging with other people through that actual uh, platform. So cool. Nice. And well, we need to plan a Chicago meetup here, you know, for both here. We've done, we did one in the past, like a while ago, and it was a pretty small. A few people came out, but we haven't got anything together in a while. So. Let's do it make that happen. i'm in all right all right uh and then so shadow the veins on twitter at shadow the vein website shadow the vein.com all the episodes get posted there links to itunes stitcher the youtube version as well and damn yeah, they'll do it 2.0 drop in here december 14th be back with more stuff on that on the next episode take care